Hey guys, just kind of want to put out a little short video here. Kind of encourage y'all. Um, a prayer. Importance of it. We all know that, of course. Pray without ceasing. I may or may not quote some scriptures. I'm not sure yet. Um, but it's so vital. Because look at Jesus feeding the 5,000. You know, it wasn't even, he wasn't even really looking for the miracle. He wasn't even trying to meet their, their, you know, fleshly needs. He was more worried about what was going to happen to him if they left. And so what did he do? He prayed. Blessed it. So that it would be sufficient enough to meet the need do what it needed to do, which was sustain the people until they could get out to their houses or wherever they were, wherever they were journeying back to from. In the garden, in the wilderness, on the cross, wherever he went, it's our communication with him. It should be with God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and then we should get to the Direction through this, his word, because it's a living word, guys. The Bible's living word, guys. It's not a dead book, just a bunch of pages. It's spirit-filled if we let it. But you can't get it if you're not praying. You can't hear what the Spirit has to say in the church if you're not praying. You can't connect with the Father if you're not praying can't see his plans if you're not praying. The model prayer, our Father who art in heaven. That's a great start right there. So it's the most underused because, you know, you talk to people, oh, I'll pray for you, or, you know, I mean, I even post stuff as like, oh, I'll pray for so-and-so because they're really sick or, you know, and, and, and I do that because I do want, I do covet, people's prayers, and I do want more people to pray. But, you know, a lot of times we give people canned answers, guys. I'll pray for you, you know. It's like when you, you know, you know they're probably, you can just tell that the spirit of discernment, they're probably not going to. It just sounds good, you know. You hide behind that. Are you, that's one of my most favorite things to do. That's what, one of the things I tell them down at the, the homeless shelter. If all you got... And you can say, Jesus, what would you do? God, what would you do? Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, what would you do? Pray, guys, for divine direction. Greatest defense, greatest umbrella, shadow of the Almighty, protection, guidance. This man could keep you from a car wreck, could keep you from... Making the wrong move in a business could just do so many different things in your lives. Wrong marriage. Wrong place to live, whatever. Or it could be an offensive weapon because you could be having somebody in your family that's just raising hell. Or in your church or on your job or, you know, right now, some of the people, I mean, I'm not trying to highlight sensationalism. I don't like all that, guys. But, you know, Franklin Graham's kind of getting getting beat up pretty bad. <clears throat> Whether you agree with him or don't agree with him, doctrinally or whatever, <clears throat> he's still taking a stand in the LGBT area. And he's taking a, a, a beating for it. So prayers are very important. And the reason why I'm saying that, and this is another one, I'm not trying to sensationalize it, just look it up, put it out, 2018, December, I think, 2018, pray for Donald Trump, because he's about to hit a brick wall. But I said pray for him as a man that he finds Jesus in all this mess. I'm not doing it because I think, because the prophetic gifting that the Lord has given me I'm saying it to encourage you to look and say, wow, you know, because I'm not the only one. There's millions of people now that are praying for him and have been praying for him in the past, too. I'm saying it works, guys. That's my point. Not that, you know, 
Lord showed me that. That's great and awesome, and sometimes, it, but that can sometimes go a little bit too far out there. What I'm saying is, pray, talk to God, communicate with Him, not just daily, hourly, but minute by minute, all day long. It's me. God, do I go left? Do I go right? Do I go to this store? Do I go to that store? What am I doing today, Jesus? Why am I here today, God? What? What's what's the purpose? What's the what's your plan? Talk to somebody, not talk to somebody. So many things we can pray before me in prayer, guys. And that's what's gonna change things. Cause then he gets the glory. Not us. <clears throat> That's what he's after. That small, still place, that quiet place, your secret place that nobody knows. I, you know, I kind of have to tell a little bit because I'm a watchman and I'm doing it because I'm also to encourage people. I'm doing it to encourage people to just get them in the right direction. So it's just, you know, I give, I'm trying to give examples on a lot of my videos and stuff <clears throat> because of that. Not because I want anything, guys. Honestly, I don't. I'm not a typical preacher. I don't need anything from you guys. I don't need an offering. I'm fine. Let's see the light's still on. Do I look like I haven't ate in a while? No, I just ate. My needs are met by my Father in heaven and the Son. His name is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost that leads, guides, directs me to all truths. <clears throat> and then I get the living word that brings, kind of just ties it all together and starts bringing it forth and just. So that's part of the importance of gathering together as a body. You gotta be careful where you gather, who you gather with. What you're listening to, what you're eating, pray about it, guys. It's, I mean, all my messages kind of all revolve around the same thing, but it's pray, guys. Pray about this message. Pray about your heart. Pray about... <clears throat> because <clears throat> there's so many distractive things out there, you know? Everybody's, I mean, and I kind of slowed down a little bit on Facebook because I got checked by two different people. <clears throat> one in church, one not that I know of. <clears throat> but it was like, okay, I better just kind of just <clears throat> put a little bit more thought and prayer into some of these, especially the reposting stuff that I was doing. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, all right, God. I, you know, I wanted to, I was trying to encourage people, and some of them seemed really good, but then I started realizing, well, may, wait a minute, maybe... I mean, this is drifting down towards the lane of, you know, the sensationalism and the fake news stuff, too. It can be the opposite side of the pendulum on the Christian side, too. So it's like, okay, God, what do you want me to say? Speak. Put on YouTube. Put on Facebook. Put on Instagram. Put out to my children. Put out to my wife. Put out to the people around me. Put out to my friends. If you, um, if you haven't got it in prayer, guys, it's probably a muddled up, mixed up bag of bones and dirt and just garbage, literally. Everybody's barking about so much stuff. Super Bowl's a big one right now. Well, guys, pray about it. What are you seeing in all that? You know, now they're saying I was kind of like soft porn, and I, I put out a, a video on it too because of the sexual sensationalism and the idol, idolistic stuff behind it. Because guys, the NFL, the, the, the game, it's took on more than it's supposed to be. It's been sensationalized. Go, go, go to Google, it's all, you know, all over the place. It's become an idol, guys. 
Because we haven't been praying about it. Really, literally, there's things in our lives. That's why, that's why I'm saying that. That's why the one's out. I'm going to end this now. That's why the, one of the ones is out about, about the storm that's coming to America. 8-11-2020, the whole country. Aflamed, guys. I'm not making this up. For brownie points, I'm not making this up for your offering. I need millions, literally, but... <clears throat> don't send me ten bucks. I'm not even asking for anything. Honestly, it'll come. It'll come. I mean, I've had miraculous things just recently happen. When it seemed like the rug was pulled off from underneath us in a free fall, sort of. God's like, do this, do this, do that, you know. So it was even like the ravens. So I was like, okay, God, I'm, I'm in. But why? Where did I get a lot of this? In prayer. It's not just me, guys. I'm not, that's not what I, that's, I'm not saying, oh, yep, yeah, pray like me. Pray like you, the vessel that God created you to be. How did he tell you to pray? What is he telling you to do? <clears throat> pray in the shower. Pray in the bathtub. Pray in your car. Pray on your way to work. Pray at work. Pray in a cubicle. Pray for the person next to you. What is he telling you to do, guys? And you get more. And the more you pray, the more you get. It's like, this, it's just awesome, guys. Not always, you know, yeah, somebody does come from corporate prayer, but the vast majority of it, no, the vast majority of it comes from your secret place, honestly, guys. Because if you don't go to church and you haven't been prayed up and seeking God and for direction, you may be in the wrong place, you may be in the wrong church, you may be in the wrong <clears throat> friendship, you may be in the wrong marriage, <clears throat> you may be in the wrong car, whatever. Wrong place at the wrong time. <clears throat> Because you haven't prayed about it. You haven't asked, well, God, what do you think? And then listen, guys. It's a two-way street. Prayer is the communication. Once it's in the cool of the day, there's just so much to it, guys. There's just so much power, and it's just, bit, we neglect it. 30-second prayer. We're off into something else. The enemy's worn with their mind. There's all these distractions. This is a soapbox, yes, but y'all will get the just. I'm driving along. I'm only going, school zone just ended, and so I'm going, and so I'm, you know, not going 20. I'm going 30. I'm not even driving very fast. Some guy gets out of his truck, not even looking. Got a hoodie on, so I couldn't see his face. But I could see that he has a cell phone up to his ear. I mean, he just walked right out in front of me. Didn't even look up. Even after I honked at him, just kept walking. Like, you know, I should know, you know, it's like, we're oblivious to stuff because of the distractive, divisive, the enemy's the opposite of prayer, but he's talking to us through all this stuff, guys. All these devices and computers, and I don't want to do any of this stuff, but it's, but it's a tool that's got to be used. Because it's getting out there, the message out there. But all this stuff gets our mind off. You know? Everybody's on a cell phone, on their tablet, on their computer. <clears throat> at home, doing stuff. Everywhere you go. So, what's that doing for you? Nothing but taking your mind off of prayer. Taking your mind off of Jesus, God, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. So, I'm saying that to encourage you guys. Pray without ceasing. What's He telling you to do? You know, I'm like Larry the Cable Guy, kind of. Just get her done. Maybe messy Marvin even, you know, I'll pick up the pieces later. I'm just going to grab that ball by the horn and wrestle it down to the ground and, you know, I'll kind of think of the consequences later. That's just me. 
you know, but that's a vessel he created me to be, but he created us all for different vessels and different purposes and different reasons. And you get your direction in prayer. So love you guys. Talk to you soon. I um, don't want to make this any longer. You can email me at jesusisalive in g at gmail.com. Google Jesus is Alive in America and find us. Um, so, you know, comment, blog with us at jesusisaliveinamerica.com. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.